Good evening, everybody. Am I audible and is the screen visible to everyone? Great. So today we are going to do a little bit of puzzles, not very, very uh, important in terms of uh, CLAT. If you take a look at the past couple of editions, past couple of years papers, but nevertheless, it is not something which is unexpected because some basic funda of puzzles could be asked in the mathematical section because most of the data interpretation sets also have a little bit of this. And if you're appearing for ILET, ILET definitely has questions which are puzzle based. So we will be look, taking a look at the basics. We will be trying to understand uh, the basic types of puzzles and then take a few examples, right? So this is going to be a repeat for those who have already attended many of my puzzle classes before. But in case you haven't done the basic theory part, then here it is today. So I'm going to quickly show you the different uh, types of puzzles and the basic methods to solve them. And then I'll be putting up the new puzzles on the screen, which we can solve together. So the very first and the simplest kind of puzzle is something which I call as the comparison based puzzle. Now, supposing I want to have a comparison between different objects, right? Then I can use some quantity, some characteristics, some attributes, some feature of the objects which can be measured in numbers. I can always compare things when there is some characteristic about those things which can be measured in numbers. For example, I can compare children based on their height because height can be measured using numbers or I can arrange uh, a group of men according to their weight or I can arrange the students in the class according to their age or sometimes even alphabetical arrangement is possible because alphabetically also we know the sequence in which things are based. So we talk about comparisons and the puzzle could have clues where I could say that A is taller than B. So the first information A is taller than B could be written as A is taller than B using the greater than symbol. If you pay attention here to the right of the screen, I can write A is taller than B by simply writing A is greater than B. So the mathematical symbols of greater than and less than can be used to indicate the relationship between A and B. But a better way of doing it is I can simply draw A is taller than B where I actually write A larger than B. So just by looking at this, I can identify that A is taller than B, right? Now, supposing I have another clue where I say B is shorter than C, then I can write B is less than C, or I could simply write B is shorter than C like this, right? I can either use the mathematical symbol of less than to indicate that B is less than, that is B is shorter than C, or I can draw B smaller than C. So visually it indicates that B is the shorter one. Now, by combining the two of the two given statements that A is taller than B and B is shorter than C, is it possible for me to identify who is the tallest among the three people? I have got three people A, B and C. I have given you two clues about how they are in comparison to each other. Based on these two clues, is it possible for me to identify who is the tallest person in the group? Well, if I want to draw all of this together, I can say A is taller than B like this and B is shorter than C. So if I draw it in this format, it indicates that A is the tallest person. However, I could also have drawn A is taller than B and B is shorter than C like this. And according to this diagram, C is the tallest person. And I could also have drawn A is taller than B and B is shorter than C, right? In this case, both A and C are together. So what we need to understand is that when I have two clues like this, I know the relationship between A and B. I know the relationship between B and C. 
but this particular way of giving information is not enough to identify what is the relationship between a and c so who is the tallest according to the given information the answer cannot be determined but supposing i ask who is the shortest person in this particular group then it does not matter which arrangement i use the shortest person in this group is always going to be b so with such clues it is possible to identify who is the shortest but in this particular type of clue it is not possible to identify the tallest person of the group right so you need to be careful that whenever you are making a comparison between objects there are three types of relationships possible one one could be less than the other second it could be greater than the other and remember there is also the possibility that the two things could be equal to each other so keeping that type of information in mind if, if this is the data given to you where it is there are five specific lines arti is older than sanya muskan is elder than arti younger than kashish kashish is elder than sanya sanya is younger than muskan and gargi is the eldest then how do i identify who is the youngest person in this group now remember that there are two ways in which i could have solved this example first according to the diagram method which we have just seen so supposing i want to say that arti is older than sanya then i can draw arti taller than sanya so taller is the larger one so arti older than sanya muskan is elder than arti but younger than kashish now the third clue kashish is elder than sanya i don't require because already the data is enough from the two previous lines sanya is younger than muskan again i don't need this information because the first two clues already told me that using the last line gargi is the eldest now i can identify that gargi is elder than kashish is elder than muskan is elder than arti is elder than sanya so now it is easy to identify who is the youngest <clears throat> obviously the youngest person in this group is sanya now drawing this it's if you have drawn this once then if there are multiple questions you can just refer to the diagram and answer there is one other method how you could have done this right supposing this is the only question then i don't even need a diagram how can i solve it it asks me who is the youngest person in the group so using the clues and the options i can keep eliminating so if i want to identify the youngest person in the group the first one says arti is older than so arti cannot be the youngest person because arti, arti is older than somebody muskan is elder than so that means muskan also cannot be the youngest and if muskan is younger than kashish then kashish also cannot be the youngest so using the first two clues itself i have eliminated three out of the four options i don't even need the remaining three for this particular question i just have the first two clues as enough data to identify that the youngest one is sanya in this group did everybody get this one so either you can complete the diagram or if this is just one question sometimes using the combination of the questions and the options it is enough to identify the answer okay so these are comparison based questions now let us say five it is given a b c d e five friends where a is shorter than b taller than e c is the tallest d is shorter than b and taller than a combining all that information who has two persons taller and two persons shorter than him or her so technically i am required to identify who is the person who is in the middle of the group so supposing i know that a is shorter than b so a is shorter than b but taller than e so a is taller than e c is the tallest so c is the tallest d is shorter than b and taller than a which only means that d is between b and a so now it's easy 1 2 3 4 5 the third person would be the one in the middle of the group 
So who has two persons taller and two persons shorter than him or her has to be D. Easy. Hope everybody got this one. Correct. Now we come to the most common type of question which is asked in the examinations. And these are questions which are based on grids or tables. Now typically creating a table is very, very useful when you have got two or three groups containing elements and you have to establish a connection between each element of the different groups. For example, if I know that there are three boys who stay in three different cities, then I can create a simple three by three table to identify the connection between them. So let us say that I have got three boys, A, B and C, and they belong to three different cities. Let us say P, Q and R. So to establish the connection between them, I can create a three by three table where I put the three boys A, B and C on one side and P, Q, R, the three cities on the other side. Now, supposing my first clue says that A belongs to city P. So, one thing first I need to remember that one boy can only live in one city. And here, if one city can only contain one boy, then the moment I get the clue that A belongs to P, I put a tick in the cell which connects A and P. So, if A lives in P, A cannot live in Q or R. And because one city can contain only one boy, if P contains A, P cannot contain B or C. So remember, when you know that only one to one connection is possible, then the moment you put a tick in one of the cell, cross out the entire row and column. Now, supposing my second clue says that Q does not contain B, right? So if Q does not contain B, I put a cross in the connection between Q and B. Now, I don't need more information. For B cannot live in P and Q, that means B has to live in R. And the moment I know that Q does not contain A and B, Q has to contain C. So now I have established the connection between all three boys and all three cities. A lives in P, B lives in R, and C lives in Q. So remember, when you know that there is a one to one connection, that is one element of first group can only be connected to one element of second group and one element of second group can only be connected to one element of the first group. Then the moment you put a tick in one of the cells, remember to cross out the entire row and the entire column. Do you understand this basic funda of how to solve questions of grid based puzzles? Right. So now let's take an example. Supposing it says that there are three persons A, B and C who wore shirts of black, blue and orange color, not necessarily in that order and pants of green, yellow and orange color, not necessarily in that order. So now I know there are three different elements which I need to connect. There are persons, there are shirts and there are pants. But I know that the common thing is the person. The same person will wear one shirt and one pant. So I make a table like this where I put the persons A, B and C as the common element, common column in middle. On the right hand side, let's assume that I am putting my shirts. So my shirts are of three different colors, black, blue and orange. And on the left hand side, I will put the data for pants in three different colors of green, yellow and orange, right? So in a single table, I will be able to connect the data of the boys, of the persons with the shirt color and the pant color. Now, it says that no person wore a pant and shirt of the same color. So it is important to remember that orange is the only color which is common. So if somebody is wearing an orange shirt, cannot wear the orange pant. Somebody who is wearing the orange pant cannot wear the orange shirt. Now, 
we start looking at the five clues which are given. The first clue says A did not wear a shirt of black. So A and black I cross out, but I cannot put a tick, right? Because I don't know. Second, B did not wear a shirt of blue. So B and blue I cross out. Third, C did not wear a shirt of orange. So C and orange shirt I cross out. Fourth, A did not wear a pant of green. So A and green pant is crossed out. Last one, B wore a pant of orange color. So first B and orange pant. So if B is wearing an orange pant, B cannot wear a pant of any other color. Remember, when I put a tick, I cross out the entire row and column. So I have crossed out the row and I have crossed out the column. Also, because B is wearing an orange pant, B cannot be wearing an orange shirt because the same color shirt pant is not possible. Now, all my clues are used up, but I can still complete the table. Let's take a look at the pants first. Now, A is not wearing orange or green pant. So, A has to be wearing yellow. And the moment I put a tick, I cross out. So, automatically I get C is wearing the green. So, all the pants are connected. Now, come to the right hand side of the table. Under orange shirt, only A is remaining. So, put A orange shirt and cross out the row. So, now under blue, only C is remaining. Cross out the row and column. The only thing left, B has to be black. So, this completes my table. Now, I exactly know who is wearing what. A is wearing an orange shirt and yellow pant. B is wearing a black shirt and an orange pant. C is wearing a blue shirt and a green pant. Everybody got this one? Grid table based puzzles can easily be done if you mechanically keep filling in the data. Remember, the moment you put a tick, if you know it is a one to one connection, then you have to also put a cross in the entire row and column. Now, let's take a look at this example. Now, in this example, again, it is given that there are five cities, A, B, C, D, and E, which are famous for different things like Lovely Garden. Just a second. So it says that there are five cities A, B, C, D and E which are famous for lovely garden, fancy jewelry, educational institution, blue pottery and scents but not in the same order. Now I have to connect cities with different things. So I can create a table like this where I have got my five cities of A, B, C. Just a second. My data is not getting... Okay. So now I have got five cities a b c d and e and i have got lovely gardens fancy jewelry educational institutions blue pottery and scents right you can start filling in the table first data a and c are neither educational institutions so cross out educational for a and c nor they have gardens. So A and C does not have garden. B and E not famous for jewelry. So B and E not famous for jewelry or pottery. So B and E not pottery. Scents and jewelry have nothing to do with A. So scents and jewelry nothing to do with A. So now even before I continue, I can already see that for A, the only thing left is blue pottery. So the row and column I eliminate. Next, D and E are not famous for garden and jewelry. So, D and E, no garden. D and E, no jewelry. Now, again, lovely garden, only B is left. So, cross out the row. And fancy jewelry, only C is left. Cross out the row. Last, D is not famous for education. 
so d education eliminated so d automatically goes with cents eliminate the column education automatically goes with e so now i have quick by the time i have read the last clue i have also connected every single city with the particular thing that it is famous for so this is also relatively a very easy thing this is just an indicator of how grids can be used or how tables can be used to solve connecting data puzzles hope everybody got this one great now try this one i'll give you about a minute see if you are able to solve this it says there are four players who are holding four cards each of them has an ace king queen jack and each of them has a spade heart club and diamonds and you are given four specific clues you have to identify exactly which four cards each one of them has so there are four so what are spades hearts clubs and diamonds so in playing cards cards which look like this are called spades these are called hearts these are called clubs and these are called diamonds right so there are four aces one spade one heart one club diamond similarly four queens four king four jack so total 16 cards so these 16 cards have to be given to all four a b c d four for each so exactly which four cards are with which four people you can use a table to solve this one let's see if you are able to do it tell me when you are done done okay done 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 <clears throat> great this is definitely an easy one right let's see you can create a simple table i'll show you one way of doing it you could have done another way so there are four cards right the four cards are ace king queen and jack and there are four suits spades hearts clubs and diamonds so now let's put in the things in the middle a has ace of spades so ace of spades belongs to a queen of diamonds so queen of diamonds also belongs to a b has ace of clubs so ace of clubs belongs to b king of diamonds also belongs to b c has queen of clubs so queen of clubs belongs to c king of spades also belongs to c and d has jack of clubs so jack of clubs belongs to d now we have to put a b c d all four of them in each row and each column right so those of you who have played a game called sudoku will know how to do this but even if you have not played that game you don't know that the game don't worry all i have to do is every row and every column must have all four a b c d so i'll start with the easiest one that is clubs i already have b c and d so all i need to do is simply fill in the remaining one a right so clubs is done now kings if you take a look at the king wala column c a and b are already there so now i can fill in d so my king column is also done clubs ka row is done now i can start filling in the remaining data in spades i need b and d 
if i put b queen i cannot put d jack because d jack is already there in clubs so i can put d here and b here so once i put d and b under queen i get b to be put here now in hearts i need a and c i cannot put a in the first one because a is already there so i put a and c that's it under a is a c b so d and under jack b a d so c and d automatically has all four of them so i get the arrangement every row has a b c d every column has a b c d did everybody get this one i'll do it one more time for those who did not get it i have ace king queen and jack and i have got spades hearts clubs and diamonds i need to put all four in all four a has ace of spades and queen of diamonds b has ace of clubs and king of diamonds c has queen of clubs and king of spades and d has jack of clubs this data is given to me arman got this itna data to diya hai apne paas so now i need to put a b c d in each row and each column so first of all clubs wale row ke andar dekho in the clubs row already i have got b c and d so i can put a here and in the king column i already have c a and b so i can put d here now in the spades row if i put b and d then d and d cannot be together so d and b has to be put in the queen column d c a is there so b is remaining now in the hearts row i cannot put a because already a is there above it so c and a so now what is left in the first column a c b d is left in the last column b a d c is left so now you get all four a b c d in every row and every column hope everybody got this one okay now the next type of puzzle is something called a conditional puzzle where you are given conditions based on which you have to solve the question so let's take an example where i say that a combination of three colors has to be chosen to decorate a room the color must be chosen from a group of seven colors so there are seven colors a b c d e f g and you have to select three colors but there are certain rules the first rule says that if a and b are chosen then the other must also be chosen which means ke agar a ko select karte ho to b ko select karna hi padega b ko agar select karte ho to a ko bhi select karna hi padega that means a b hamesha sath mein honge second condition says c and d cannot be chosen together which means agar c hai to d nahi ho sakta and agar d hai to c nahi ho sakta d and c mein se koi ek hi ho sakta hai dono kabhi saath mein nahi ho sakte and finally either c or a or both must be chosen to jo mera final group hai uske andar ya to a hona chahiye ya to c hona chahiye ya to dono hone chahiye i cannot have a group without either a or c a c dono hi nahi aisa koi group hi nahi ban sakta right so if these are the three conditions which are supposed to be satisfied then my question says 
which of the following combination of color conforms to the conditions or follows the given condition or satisfies the given conditions so in such questions you have to look at the options and identify which group is the answer so let's take a look at each of the options first option a c d now my pehla condition hai ki a aur b hamesha saath mein hone chahiye और पहले ऑप्शन के अंदर ए तो है बट बी नहीं है तो ए सी डी कैन नॉट बी माई आंसर सेकेंड ऑप्शन ए एफ में भी वही तकलीफ है कि ए है और बी नहीं है तो ए एफ को भी एलिमिनेट कर दो थर्ड के अंदर बी सी जी अगेन बी के साथ ए का होना कंपलसरी है यहां पे बी तो है ए नहीं है एलिमिनेट कर दो फोर्थ वन जी डी एफ अब ए एन बी साथ में होना चाहिए यहां पे ना ए है ना बी है नो प्रॉब्लम राइट ए है तो बी होगा ना बी है तो ए होगा लेकिन दोनों एक साथ गायब तो हो सकते हैं तो जी डी एफ में फर्स्ट कंडीशन तो सेटिस्फाई हो गया सेकंड कंडीशन सी और डी साथ में नहीं हो सकते यहां पे डी सिलेक्टेड सी इज नॉट सिलेक्टेड सेकेंड कंडीशन इज ऑल्सो सेटिस्फाइड थर्ड कंडीशन आइधर सी और ए और बोथ मस्ट बी चोजन Now, unfortunately, यहां पे ना A है ना C है Third condition is not satisfied. तो D is eliminated. So GDF cannot be my answer. तो चार पांच में से चार उड़ गए तो automatically last one तो answer ही होगा But let's check. Does this satisfy all my conditions? So first condition A भी साथ में होने चाहिए या दोनों गायब होने चाहिए So first condition no problem. सेकेंड सी एंड डी साथ में नहीं हो सकते यहां पे सी है डी नहीं है सेकेंड कंडीशन नो प्रॉब्लम थर्ड कंडीशन या तो सी या तो ए या तो दोनों होने चाहिए अब यहां पे सी तो है तो थर्ड कंडीशन इज ऑल्सो सैटिस्फाइड राइट सो ऑल थ्री कंडीशन आर सैटिस्फाइड बाय द लास्ट ऑप्शन सो ऑब्वियसली ई हैज टू बी माई आंसर इन दिस केस गॉट दिस वन So now, based on the same conditions, if I ask you another question, if I say the conditions are the same, and if D is chosen, then which of the following pair of colors must also be chosen? तीन में से तीन जो colors में से एक तो मैंने already select कर लिया है D. तो अगर D को select करता हूँ, तो बाकी दो कौन से colors को select करना ही पड़ेगा? Take a look at the options and tell me that. So this should be simple and straightforward, right? If out of the three places, my first place is D. So conditions को देखो. एक तो condition है कि C D साथ में नहीं हो सकते. तो A B C और E में से C को तो ऐसे eliminate करना पड़ेगा. एंड सी या ए में से किसी एक का मिनिमम चूज करना जरूरी है और सी को नहीं सिलेक्ट कर सकता तो ए को सिलेक्ट करना पड़ेगा और ए को अगर सिलेक्ट करता हूं तो बी को सिलेक्ट करना कंपलसरी है तो अगर मैंने डी को सिलेक्ट किया तो ए बी मस्ट बी चोजन दैट मींस फर्स्ट ऑप्शन इफ डी इज चोजन ए एंड बी हैज टू बी सिलेक्टेड करेक्ट Got this one. Okay. Now let's take a look at the next type of question in puzzles, which is something called as seating arrangement. Now, seating arrangement kind of puzzles are puzzles in which you are given information about a group of people. Who are sitting in a particular order, and based on the uh, information, you have to arrange them. Now there are two kinds of arrangements which are possible when we talk about people sitting in uh, sitting together. One is known as linear sitting arrangement. 
linear setting arrangement literally means people sitting in a straight line right so first let's take a look at linear setting arrangement when people are sitting together in a straight line it's called a linear sitting arrangement so in a linear sitting arrangement the first rule you have to remember is that we always assume that everybody is facing north or the upwards direction so if i say a b c d and e are sitting like this and if it is not given which direction they are facing we always assume that they are facing up so for everybody this is the left hand side and this will be known as the right hand side left left mein hai right right mein hai because ye sab wahi direction face kar rahe hain jo hum bhi face kar rahe hain normal so who is sitting on the extreme left a who is sitting on the extreme right e who is sitting to the left hand side of c to c ka immediate left hand side is b who is sitting two places right of b b ke two places right pe kon hai to for b c is first to the right and d is second to the right so the person sitting two places to the right of b is d so ek to left and right ka dhyan rakho right second if i get a clue that p is sitting in between q and r to jab drawing diagram banayenge yaad rakho p is sitting between q and r aise bhi draw kar sakte hain and p is sitting between q and r aise bhi draw kiya ja sakta hai because humko ye nahi pata ki q and r mein se left pe kon hai right pe kon hai so we have to consider both the possibilities p is sitting between q and r or p is sitting between q and r left right bhi ho sakta hai right left bhi ho sakta hai so now if i take an example that there are five students p q r s t sitting on a bench my first clue says that t and q are sitting together तो T एंड Q साथ में ऐसे भी बैठ सकते हैं T एंड Q साथ में ऐसे भी बैठ सकते हैं T एंड R आर सेटिंग टूगेदर तो टी आर ऐसे भी हो सकता है टी आर ऐसे भी हो सकता है दो अरेंजमेंट कर रहा हूं अभी तक ना शैलजा होल्ड ऑन होल्ड ऑन आई कम टू दैट फर्स्ट लेट्स टेक अ लुक एट दिस नाउ इट इज सेड P is sitting on the extreme left. So for five students, P on the extreme left, तो यही हो सकता है. And Q is second from the extreme right. तो first from the right, second from the right. तो Q को अगर यहाँ पे fit करता हूँ, तो Q के right hand side में एक ही जगह है. तो Q T R तो नहीं हो सकता. So R T Q. So S बचा, उसको यहाँ पे डाल दिया. So now my final arrangement becomes P R T Q S. So who is sitting between P and Q? So P and Q के बीच में दो लोग बैठे हैं R and T. Correct? Got this one so far? Okay. Now Shalya asks, what if the side and direction both are different in a question? Absolutely possible, right? Supposing I have a clue where it says that P, Q and R. are facing south and a b and c let us say are facing north to sabse pehle to we have to make sure that whoever is facing north unke liye left and right hum aise mark karenge lekin whoever is facing south unke liye left and right ka direction opposite ho jayega because aap के लिए जो लेफ्ट एंड राइट है आपके सामने जो बैठा है उसका लेफ्ट राइट right उल्टा होता है जो आपके लिए लेफ्ट है उसको सामने वाला बंदा राइट हैंड साइड बोलेगा सो यू हैव टू बी वेरी केयरफुल सो व्हेन आई से पी क्यू आर आर फेसिंग साउथ दैट मींस पी क्यू आर विल बी इन द टॉप रो और उनके लिए लेफ्ट राइट right में उल्टा मार्क करूंगा 
एंड ए बी सी आर फेसिंग नॉर्थ तो ए बी सी नीचे की तरफ होंगे और उनके लिए लेफ्ट राइट अलग होगा एंड देन बेस्ड ऑन द क्लूज यू हैव टू कीप अरेंजिंग दैम द बिगेस्ट थिंग दैट यू हैव टू कीप इन माइंड इज दैट फॉर साउथ फेसिंग पीपल लेफ्ट एंड राइट उल्टा मार्क करेंगे सो इफ इट इज सेड दैट पी इज टू द लेफ्ट ऑफ क्यू तो P इज टू द लेफ्ट ऑफ Q ऐसे ड्रॉ करोगे क्यू बिकॉज P उल्टा डायरेक्शन फेस कर रहा है तो उसके लिए लेफ्ट हैंड साइड ऑपोजिट होगा शैलजा डिड यू गेट दैट चल ना लेटस से फाइव पीपल आर स्टैंडिंग इन अ लाइन One of the two persons at the extreme end is professor. So अगर पांच लोग हैं तो या तो professor इस end पे है या तो professor दूसरे end पे है And the other is a businessman. तो businessman मैन यहां पर है या तो यहां पर है सो आई कैन ड्रॉ टू अरेन्जमेंट्स लेफ्ट राइट राइट लेफ्ट नहीं पता ना एडवोकेट इज टू द राइट ऑफ अ स्टूडेंट तो स्टूडेंट जहां पर भी होगा उसके राइट हैंड साइड पे एडवोकेट होगा अब ये नहीं दिया कि ये लोग नॉर्थ फेस कर रहे हैं साउथ फेस कर रहे हैं सो so डिफॉल्ट हम हमेशा नॉर्थ फेसिंग लेंगे क्योंकि लेफ्ट राइट इजी रहता है ऑथर इज टू द लेफ्ट ऑफ द बिजनेसमैन अगर मैं ऊपर वाला अरेंजमेंट कंसिडर करूं तो बिजनेसमैन के लेफ्ट में कोई नहीं हो सकता एंड दिया गया है कि ऑथर इज टू द लेफ्ट ऑफ द बिजनेस सो आई एलिमिनेट द ऊपर वाला अरेन्जमेंट सो ऑथर इज टू द लेफ्ट ऑफ द बिजनेस तो स्टूडेंट एंड एडवोकेट को फिट करने के लिए मेरे पास एक ही अरेंजमेंट पॉसिबल है सो नाउ फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट प्रोफेसर स्टूडेंट एडवोकेट ऑथर बिजनेसमैन बिकम्स माय फाइनल अरेंजमेंट सो व्हाट इज द पोजीशन ऑफ एडवोकेट फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट सो लेफ्ट में फर्स्ट पोजीशन इज प्रोफेसर सेकेंड पोजिशन इज स्टूडेंट थर्ड पोजिशन इज द एडवोकेट लेफ्ट में पहला बंदा प्रोफेसर है सेकेंड स्टूडेंट है थर्ड एडवोकेट है राइट right से भी अगर गिनू तो राइट से फर्स्ट इज बिजनेसमैन राइट से सेकंड इज ऑथर राइट से भी थर्ड इज द एडवोकेट अगेशा सी हेड बी केयरफुल राइट अगेन से डजन से इमीडिएटली कैन वी इमीडिएट लेफ्ट एंड नॉट लेफ्ट सी अनलेस स्पेसिफिकली मेंशन यू हैव टू अज्यूम द इमीडिएट लेफ्ट वरना देर विल बी अ क्लू वेर यू विल सी इफ लेफ्ट इफ इमीडिएट लेफ्ट इज नॉट मैंशन एंड यू अज्यूम इट टू बी इमीडिएट लेफ्ट एंड इफ इट इज नॉट द इमीडिएट लेफ्ट there will be another clue which leads to a problem so unless there is a problem in assuming immediate left you can assume the immediate left if you assume immediate left when it is not mentioned there might be another clue which will automatically lead to a problematic situation then you can correct yourself but unless otherwise mentioned you can assume it as immediate left there will be enough clues to help you identify that your assumption is wrong okay now the final type of arrangement is something called a circular arrangement right linear means line mein baithe hain in a circular arrangement people are sitting in a circle remember in a circular arrangement the first and the most important thing is that you have to arrange them equidistant so if there are three people you will place them something like this four people like this Five people like this, six people like this, eight people like this. More or less, they should be equidistant. I've seen people placing six people in a row like this. Okay, sir, circle. Me, six people. Who are sitting like this? This looks like a linear arrangement, right? So when you say circular arrangement, more or less, make sure you place them equidistant around the circle. Now, the second thing that you have to keep in mind. is that in a circle every person is sitting facing the center right hum circle mein gher ke jab baithte hain to sab center of the circle ki taraf mu rakhte hain so here you have to be very careful in arranging to so supposing i make a circle where i say there are six people seated and a b c d e and f can you tell me who is sitting on the immediate 
left of D. Who is sitting on the immediate left of D? Now, here you need to be careful. Right? Remember, when we sit in circle, everybody is facing the center of the circle. A se chalu karo. To A ke liye ye left hand side hai and ye right hand side hai. B ke liye ye left ho gaya. C ke liye ye left ho gaya. Lekin jab D ko pahunche to D ke liye left hand side is the other side. Kyunke D jo betha hai wo reverse face kar raha hai. To the person to the immediate left of D is actually E. Correct. So, keeping this in mind, remember, whenever you are placing people in a circle, pehla clue jabhi milta hai, to bande ko hamesha bottom pe rakho. Aap place kahi se bhi start kar sakte ho. Lekin agar bottom se start karo ge, to uska fayda kya hai? Because the bottom person is facing north, so, left hand side is easy to mark and once you have placed the first person draw arrow like this so that you know okay you have to follow the arrow for left hand side to right hand side click ulta chale jaoge to left right ke andar aap loche nahi maroge so the ideal thing to do when drawing people in a circle is always put the bottom person the first person at the bottom Mark the left hand side and then continue the arrangement. So, diagrammatically, bhi agar main dikhaun, to if people are sitting, to sabka left and right, many faces draw kiye hai, usse aapko pata chal jayega ke sabke liye left konsa hai and right konsa hai. I hope this makes it clear for everybody. So let's take an arrangement. If it is said A, B, C, D, E, F are sitting in a circular manner facing at the center. D is between F and B. A is second to the left of D and second to the right of E. Then who is facing A? So in this arrangement, we can do what we First, let us draw a basic circle. Right? And there are six people in the circle. So, one, two, three. 4, 5, 6. Now, D is between F and B. So, D ko F and B ke beech mein aise bhi bitha sakta hoon. Tegin yaad rakho, D ko F and B ke beech mein aise bhi bitha ja sakta hai. F bhi left right bhi ho sakta hai, right left bhi ho sakta hai. So, you have to be careful. So, ya to ab ek hi circle mein andar bahar aise arrangement karo. Ya agar aisa confusion nahi chahiye, to you can simply draw two different circles and make sure that you do the arrangement in them. So I can draw another circle. And in this circle, I put D, F and B in reverse like this. Now, aage bade. A is second to the left of D. So if this is D, then this is left hand side. So first to the left, second to the left, this. In the other arrangement, mein bhi, second to the left, A will come here. So A is second to the left of D and second to the right of E. So A is second to the right of E. So second to the right of E. So E ko to yaha pe bithana padega. So E ka second right dono situation mein ye ho gaya. Bacha kaun C. So C ko yaha pe place kar diya. So I get two different arrangements. Right. Ab who is facing A. So pehle arrangement ke andar. A ke saamne B a gaya. Lekin dousre arrangement ke andar A ke saamne F a gaya. So either B or F is facing A. So there are two possible answers in this. Got that? Correct. Explain once more this example or the entire theory for this, Magisha. 
थियरी है ये वाला एग्जाम्पल एक्सप्लेन करूं एग्जाम्पल चलो फिर से करते हैं तो सर्कल में मुझे पता है कि दो पॉसिबल अरेंजमेंट्स हैं सो मैं दो अरेंजमेंट्स पहले से बना देता हूं एक सेकेंड सो आई कैन मेक टू पॉसिबल अरेंजमेंट्स राइट सो चलो पहला क्लू बोलता है डी इज बिटवीन एफ एंड बी तो हमेशा मैं फर्स्ट पोजीशन नीचे से स्टार्ट करूंगा एंड लेफ्ट हैंड साइड के लिए ये डायरेक्शन फॉलो करूंगा सो डी बिटवीन एफ एंड बी तो डी को एफ एंड बी के बीच में ऐसे भी बिठा सकते हैं डी को एफ एंड बी के बीच में ऐसे भी बिठा सकते हैं करेक्ट नो ए इज सेकेंड टू द लेफ्ट ऑफ डी तो डी के लेफ्ट में तो एफ इज फर्स्ट टू द लेफ्ट तो सेकेंड टू द लेफ्ट ऑफ डी यानी ए यहां पे आएगा तो दोनों अरेंजमेंट में डी का सेकेंड टू द लेफ्ट ए वहां पे बैठेगा यहां तक समझ में आया डिड गेट इट टेल हियर ओके नाउ ए इज सेकेंड टू द लेफ्ट ऑफ डी एंड सेकेंड टू द राइट ऑफ ई तो ए अगर सेकेंड टू राइट ऑफ ई है तो ई सेकेंड टू लेफ्ट ऑफ ए बोल सकता हूं मैं सो ए के लिए भी लेफ्ट तो यही होगा ना तो ई सेकेंड टू द लेफ्ट ऑफ ए तो ये फर्स्ट ये सेकेंड तो दोनों अरेंजमेंट के अंदर ई यहां पे फिट हो जाएगा करेक्ट सो छह में से पांच का सेटिंग हो गया कौन बचा सी उसको खाली जगह में डाल दो सो नाउ हियर ऑपोजिट विल बी डायग्नली ऑपोजिट लाइक दिस तो दोनों अरेंजमेंट में बताओ ए के ऑपोजिट कौन है तो अगर ये ए है तो ए के ऑपोजिट या तो बी है या तो एफ है वट दिस two possible configurations cha so these are the basic types of puzzles which could be asked in the examination i am going to now put up some practice questions on the screen so what i will do is i'll put up the question and i'll give you some time you can try to solve that puzzle and then i'll show you the possible solution so let's start with the first one we already understood that puzzles are data set so we saw only one question but a puzzle set will usually have 3 to 5 questions so if you are able to solve it after understanding the data then you will get 3 to 5 questions so let's take the first one here this information is given try to solve it using the techniques which i have taught i'll give you about 2 minutes or 3 minutes to for this and then i'll show you how it can be done so you got about 2 to 3 minutes solve it and uh, in the chat you can give me a heads up if you are done
Okay. Many of you have done it. <clears throat> Let's see. So it says there is a group of six students M, N, O, P, Q, R in a class. Each of the six students opts for two subjects. One compulsory, other optional. So six people have to take two subjects. In that case, one subject will be compulsory. One subject will be optional category. Mein so I can create a simple table like this where I simply put two columns and put a compulsory subject and a optional subject. Now, the first clue says that P's optional subject was geography. So P's optional subject is geography and three others have it as compulsory. So I have to get geography in compulsory. Mein. But who has the three compulsory, I mean, who, which three have geography, I don't know. So I'll keep it in top for the time being. <clears throat> now it says Q and R have chemistry as one of the subjects. So both Q and R, they have chemistry, but I don't know compulsory or optional. So for the time being, I'll keep it out. R's compulsory subject is physics. So for R, the compulsory subject is physics, which is optional of both O and Q. So if O and Q have physics as optional, I also know that chemistry is a subject for Q and R. So chemistry becomes compulsory for Q and chemistry becomes compulsory for R. Easy. Now, geography and English are M's subject as compulsory and optional respectively. So geography is compulsory for M and English is optional for M because the order is given. Biology is an optional subject of only one of them. So optional may ek hi baki hai N. So obviously N should have biology as the optional subject. Now, the only female student in the group is the one who has geography as the optional subject. The optional subject geography is only for P. So P is the only female, which means all the others are male. And English as compulsory. So P definitely has English as compulsory. And now I knew there are three people who have compulsory geography and the only three possible M already has. So N and O also have geography as compulsory. So now I know the compulsory and the optional subject for all of them. I also know that P's gender is F and other are all males. Got this? So any question based on this set, we should be able to answer now. So let's see what type of questions could be asked. So who's the female student in the group? What is the compulsory subject of O? Who has the same compulsory and optional set like R? If you disregard which is compulsory and which is optional, then who has the same combination as R? And which of the following group of students has geography as their compulsory subject? So if you have got the set correct, then you should be able to answer. It's only the table which has to be created. Once the table is created, 
I am sure you will be able to answer each of these questions in five seconds each. Right? Everybody got this? Nice. Chal. Next one. This is less than one minute. Done. Okay. Like I said, this is barely 60 seconds. 90, 100 seconds. Maximum one, one and a half minutes is all you need to complete this. Nice. So there are five friends who ordered five different soups and five different ice creams. The common factor here is the name of the friend. So I can create a table where I put the soups on one side and the ice creams on the other, right? So I can create a simple table like this where I put soups on one side and I put ice creams on the other. Now, Avinash ordered for veg soup. So Avinash, I can put veg soup which means i can eliminate the row and the column on the left side and mango ice cream so i can also eliminate one row and column on the right side vivek did not order mutton soup so vivek mutton eliminated but ordered vanilla ice cream so sorry vivek did not order mutton soup but ordered vanilla ice cream so the appropriate row and column gets eliminated now Vijay is a vegetarian. So if Vijay is a vegetarian, Vijay cannot order mutton, Vijay cannot order chicken. Mutton chicken come under non-vegetarian. So Vijay is a vegetarian who ordered tutti frutti ice cream. So Vijay under tutti frutti gets done. And the person who ordered corn soup, Rajiv. So Rajiv has ordered corn soup, so row and column done. Ordered kasata ice cream. So if Rajiv ordered kasata ice cream, row and column done. So now take a look at this. For Vijay, the only possible soup is tomato. So first put that. For Vivek, the only possible soup is chicken. So put that. So automatically I get alok under mutton. And for alok, the only possible ice cream is pista. My table is already done. That's it. No tensions at all. So we know that Avinash is wet soup and mango ice cream. Vijay is tomato with tutti frutti. Alok is mutton with pista, Vivek is chicken with vanilla and Rajiv is corn with kasata. And if once you have got this table, answering the questions is pretty easy. Did everybody get this? Mm.
right so the questions should be easy to solve who ordered tomato which soup was ordered by vivek which combination is false so now you have to be careful in such a question it is easy to make a mistake they are asking you which one is false and looking at the options i know that one person cannot have more than one soup so either a or d has to be the answer correct either and you have to be careful you have to mark the wrong one b is eliminated c is eliminated but which one among a and d is wrong you have to mark that then which ice cream was ordered by alok and which of the following combination is true in the last question they are asking the correct combination so if you have the table in front of you and if you have correctly marked everything in the table then again answering this set of question should not take you more than 3 to 4 seconds per question as you can see if you come across a easy puzzle like this even if you take 2 to 2 and a half minutes to create the entire table in the next 30 40 seconds you can answer all five questions and being able to answer five questions in an examination like clat is a huge thing <coughs> so pray you get such puzzles clat less probability but i let good chances of getting such a question chal here's the next set on the screen go for it
relatively an easy one Not many seem to have done this. Okay, so in case somebody is struggling with this, let me show you how it can be done. See, there are too much different things to be connected, right? Six people working in three different branches, two working in Mumbai, two working in Bangalore, two working in Pune. And then three of them are supervisors. One is a manager and one remaining and are assistant managers. Right? Three supervisors, one manager. So then two of them should be assistant managers. Then one in personnel, two in accounts and three in marketing department. So because we know that we usually the place is fixed and people can be shifted around. So first I'll make the three locations, Mumbai, Bangalore, Pune. And I know there are two people in each of them. So I make two divisions under each city. So Mumbai, Bangalore, Pune, I made the three cities and there are two locations, two positions in each of them. Now I can start with the clues. It says the first one is Mrs. Suprabha Sen is neither Mumbai nor Bangalore. So Suprabha Sen definitely has to be Pune. So Suprabha Sen is the first person I know in Pune. Now, Roshan Singh, assistant manager, not Bangalore. So, Roshan Singh, I know, is not Bangalore. So, he can be Mumbai or Pune, but I don't know which one. So, as of now, I cannot fill in the blank. Now, Ajay Dev is a supervisor in accounts at Mumbai. So, Ajay Dev is Mumbai. Ajay Dev is in accounts department and he is a supervisor. So, first data which is complete is for Ajay in Mumbai. Now, next, Veena Murli, assistant manager marketing in Bangalore. So, Veena Murli is marketing department and she is the assistant manager. So, I have got one more piece of information now. Next, one of the gentlemen working in the accounts department is at the Pune branch and he is the senior supervisor. So I know one of the gentlemen in the Pune branch is in the accounts department and I know the one person of Pune is already Suprabha Sen who is a missus, female. So the other person in the Pune branch 
इज दी अकाउंट डिपार्टमेंट वाला बंदा एंड ही इज दी सीनियर सुपरवाइजर चलो इतना फिट हो गया अपने पास सो सीनियर सुपरवाइजर इज ऑल्सो सुपरवाइजर रोल करेक्ट ओके सो नाउ आई हैव ऑलरेडी फिट अजय देव आई हैव पुट वीणा मुरली आई हैव पुट सुप्रभा सैन सो नाउ देव टू जेंटलमैन लेफ्ट रोशन सिंह एंड दुष्यंत एंड मिसेज वर्णा चिटनेस सो नाउ आई डू नॉट नो विच ऑफ द टू जेंटलमैन आर एंड पुणे नो प्रॉब्लम नाउ आई नो वर्णा चिटनेस वर्क एज अ मैनेजर she is neither in marketing nor in accounts department so if varna chitnis is not in marketing and she is not in the accounts department then the only thing left is personnel so now i know varna chitnis works as a manager in the personnel department <coughs> right so now i have got my limited amount of information what i can put i have got one information which i could not put but now i can look at this it says roshan singh is assistant manager not in bangalore so roshan singh could be mumbai or pune but the pune person is already a senior supervisor that means roshan singh has to be in mumbai roshan singh has to be an assistant manager correct so now i have got a man in pune who is not ajay or roshan singh so the only person left is dushyant so now i have got ajay roshan veena uh, suprabha and dushyant the only person left is varna so varna automatically gets put into bangalore so varna chitnis is a manager right so one manager varna chitnis is already there and she is in the personnel department that is also pretty much fulfilled <clears throat> so now i have got how many people as supervisors i have got two people as supervisors but total three are supervisors that means suprabha also has to be a supervisor right one is a manager and the remaining two assistant managers already done i have got people working in two in the accounts department i have already got two in the accounts department one in personnel i have already got one in personnel so three in marketing so that means roshan must also be marketing and suprabha must also be marketing so now i have got full information for all of them <coughs> did you get the table everybody which part did you not understand arman got it okay so if the table is complete obviously the questions will be very very easy to solve क्वेश्चन तो बड़े ही स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड होंगे लाइक विच इज द ग्रुप ऑफ सुपरवाइजर्स तो तीन सुपरवाइजर कौन है ऑप्शन में से उठा लो टेबल आपके सामने होगा तो बिंदा आंसर कर सकते हो राइट सो द सुपरवाइजर्स आर अजय सुप्रभा एंड दुष्यंत So Ajay, Suprabha, and Dushyant. C option C is to the answer. Then who is the personal managers? Who is the personal manager? वो भी आ जाएगा. Dushyant Vaidya is which branch? <coughs> we'll get that. And which of the statements is true? i am quickly rushing through the questions because once you have understood how to solve it and you have the table in front of you you just have to refer to the table and you will get the answer right i hope everybody is following me there okay 
एंड विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कॉम्बिनेशन इज नॉट ट्रू सो यू नीड टू बी केयरफुल नॉट ट्रू वाला है क्वेश्चन जहां पर यह नॉट वर्ड आता है बड़ा खतरनाक होता है यानी कि चार में से तीन ऑप्शन तो सही है कौन सा ऑप्शन गलत है वो फाइंड करना बी वेरी वेरी केयरफुल वेन यू आर रीडिंग द क्वेश्चन easy to miss that not and then mark the wrong answer and come chal if this is understood then let's try this one There are two different categories of classification. तो अगर बहुत confused हो रहे हो then take only one of them. You have to classify them according to height and you have to classify them according to weight. तो अगर दोनों एक साथ नहीं हो पा रहा है तो पहले सिर्फ और सिर्फ height वाले clues को लेके solve करो और फिर weight वाले clues को लेके solve करो If you split it into two different classifications, it becomes easier to solve. डन छे ओके बोलो जनता डंछे 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 चलो जिनको समझ में नहीं आया लेट्स डू दिस वन लास्ट सेट
सो देर आर सिक्स पीपल एंड नाम भी ऐसे मस्त ए बी सी डी ई एफ लिए सो ए बी सी डी ई एफ आर सिक्स स्टूडेंट इन अ क्लास ओके अब दो क्लासिफिकेशन करने हैं उनको हाइट के हिसाब से भी अरेंज करना है वेट के हिसाब से भी अरेंज करना है सो आई एम गोइंग टू फर्स्ट फोकस ओनली ऑन हाइट राइट सो पहला बी एंड सी आर शॉर्टर देन फारूक हैवियर तो वेट के लिए चला गया तो पहले सिर्फ शॉर्ट या टॉल पे जाएंगे तो बी एंड सी आर शॉर्टर देन एफ बी एंड सी आपस में कितने हैं वो पता नहीं बट बी सी दोनों एफ से छोटे हैं अब हैवियर का मुझे कोई लेना देना नहीं है डी इज ये हैवियर देन पार्ट भूल जाओ डी इज टॉलर देन सी तो D is greater than C इतना पता चल गया ओके okay. E is shorter than D so E is shorter than D but taller than F तो E is taller than F and shorter than D तो इन सब का अरेंजमेंट भी अपने पास आ गया है करेक्ट तो इसकी अलग से जरूरत नहीं है इसकी अलग से जरूरत नहीं है F is heavier. चलो हैवियर वाले क्लू का कोई लेना देना नहीं है A is shorter than E, but taller than F. तो A is shorter than E, taller than F. तो A, E and F के बीच में आएगा तो चलो इतना तो पक्का हो गया कि हाइट में टॉलेस्ट D है फिर E है फिर A है फिर F है एंड बॉटम दो में B या C में से कोई है लेकिन बॉटम दो में B है या C है वो पता नहीं तो कोई भी हो सकता है तो हाइट के हिसाब से तो अरेंजमेंट कम्स लाइक डी ई ए एफ इज टॉल टू शॉर्ट एंड लास्ट दो पोजीशन में बी या सी इतना समझ में आ गया चल अब करते हैं वेट के हिसाब से तो आई एम चेंजिंग द कलर ऑफ माई पेन शॉर्टर टॉलर का क्लू भूल जाओ बी एंड सी आर हैवियर देन और बिंदो तो बी एंड सी आर हैवियर देन ए बट बी एंड सी आपस में क्या है नहीं पता डी इज हैवियर देन बी तो डी इज ग्रेटर देन बी पता चल गया एंड बी इज ग्रेटर देन ए पता चल गया लेकिन सी का क्या रिलेशन है अभी तक नहीं पता चलो शॉर्टर एंड टॉलर वाला क्लू का तो मैं कुछ कर नहीं सकता हूं यहां पे जो मिसिंग है एफ इज हैवियर देन डी तो एफ इज ग्रेटर देन डी ये भी पता चल गया राइट right? तो अभी हमको सिर्फ इतना पता है कि एफ इज ग्रेटर देन डी इज ग्रेटर देन बी इज ग्रेटर देन ए यहां पे ई e कहां पे है वो मुझे नहीं पता एंड सी ए के तो ऊपर आएगा लेकिन बाकी सी कहां पर आएगा वो भी मुझे नहीं पता तो हेवीएस्ट एंड लाइटेस्ट में मैं कुछ खास अरेंजमेंट नहीं कर सकता बस इतना रख सकता हूं कि एफ डी बी एवियस्ट टू लाइटेस्ट ऑर्डर में है लेकिन सबसे लाइट कौन है आई हैव नो आइडिया हैवीएस्ट भी कौन है आई हैव नो आइडिया तो इतना अरेंजमेंट अपने पास आ जाता है करेक्ट यहां तक समझ में आ गया अपने पास पूरा डेटा नहीं है कि हंड्रेड सॉल्व कर सके तो डेटा इनसफिशियंट या कैन नॉट बी डिटरमाइंड बी आंसर हो सकता है करेक्ट तो अगर यह समझ में आ गया तो लेटर सी के क्वेश्चन में एग्जैक्टली exactly पूछा क्या गया है अगर पूछें कि हु इज द टॉलेस्ट तो टॉलेस्ट तो चलो अपने बिल्कुल अरेंज करके देख चुके हैं डी ई ए एफ बी सी तो अपना था ही सो डी ई ए एफ एंड बी आर सी में से कोई नीचे है ना तो टॉलेस्ट तो पक्का द्वारका है कोई टेंशन ही नहीं है हु इज द थर्ड फ्रॉम द टॉप वेन अरेंज इन डिसेंडिंग ऑर्डर ऑफ हाइट तो छोटे से बड़े से डिसेंडिंग यानी बड़े से छोटा बड़े से छोटा जब अरेंज करूंगा तो ऊपर से तीसरा कौन है सो डी ई ए सो ऊपर से तीसरा और बिंदु है एंड हु इज शॉर्टर धैन और बिंदु और बिंदु से साइज में बटका कौन 
तो एफ बी एन सी एफ बी सी तीनों ही और बिंदुओं से कम है तो फोर्थ ऑप्शन फारूक बबलू चित्रंजन तीनों ही और बिंदुओं से छोटे हैं फिर लाइटेस्ट कौन है तो अपने को वेट में तो पता ही नहीं था कि लाइटेस्ट कौन है तो ऑब्वियसली डेटा इन एडिक्वेट मार्क करेंगे मुझे पता ही नहीं लाइटेस्ट कौन है एंड विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कुड बी ट्रू फॉर फारूक रिगार्ड्स टू हाइट एंड वेट तो फारूक इज डेफिनेटली हैवियर देन बबलू एंड चित्रंजन एंड इज डेफिनेटली शॉर्टर देन द्वारका तो सी कैन बी माई आंसर करेक्ट समझ में आया यस चलो सो दैट वी कम टू द एंड ऑफ द सेशन थोड़ा आगे निकल गए बट ठीक है आपके पास एनालिटिकल रीजनिंग का जो मटेरियल होगा रीजनिंग में एनालिटिकल रीजनिंग का जो बुक है देर आर टू कंप्लीट एक्सरसाइजेस ऑफ पजल्स इन दैट सो इफ यू हैव नॉट ऑलरेडी सॉल्व इट देन आई विल स्ट्रॉन्गली रेकमेंड दैट यू सॉल्व दोज टू सेट्स दोज टू एक्सरसाइजेस ऑफ पजल्स फ्रॉम द एनालिटिकल रीजनिंग बुक टुमोरो इज सैटरडे सो टुमोरो वी विल बी डूइंग लीगल रीजनिंग बट द टाइमिंग फॉर लीगल रीजनिंग इज either you can attend morning 11 to 12:30 or the same session will be repeated in the evening so you can attend that from 5:30 to 7 in the evening so tomorrow the timings will be you have an optional time of saturday you can either attend from 11 to 12:30 in the morning or 5:30 to 7 in the evening so that those are the only two slots but you can attend any one of them for legal tomorrow on saturday and day after tomorrow on sunday the revision for gkca will be 9:30 to 11 in the morning in both the modes physical and online and then the regular session from 11:30 to 1 for gk i hope everybody is aware of these timings so tomorrow and day after the timings will not be the evening slot of 7:30 to 9 tomorrow you can attend any one of the two sessions either you can attend from 11 to 12:30 or you can attend from 5:30 to 7 and sunday 9:30 to 11 will be the re uh, repeat revision session for gk current affairs and the regular session will be from 11:30 to 1 chalo both physical and the usual mode shall whatever was the usual mode will be the usual mode 